Hey guys, Katana with Gemini Smile here. Today I'm going to show you how to make these Tooth Gem Try On Sticks for your Tooth Gem Studio. I'm sure you've seen these all over the internet if you follow anything Tooth Gem related. They're a super convenient way to let your client try on different sizes of crystals without having to dip into your inventory. Um, so for the last month or so, we've been trying out different products and ways to make these. So I'm gonna show you all the tools you need, what to do and what not to do, and how to make your own. I'll also tell you where to buy them if you just don't wanna make your own. First things first, go ahead and take a screenshot of this page. This includes all of the tools that you will need to make these tooth gem size guides. We're going to start by lining up all of the popsicle sticks. You can really use anything flat, but I'm just using the Cricut scraper tool here. And then you're going to draw a straight line across all of them. Make sure that the line that you draw gives enough room for your key ring to still fit. So you want your popsicle sticks to be able to slide right onto that key ring and not have the hole too far down. So you can see we made a straight line all the way across. Next, you want to mark where you plan on drilling a hole. So I just do a little dot in the center of each popsicle stick. You can measure it and be precise if you want to, but to be honest, your drill is probably going to slide a tiny bit anyway. You can use a hammer and a nail to make a little indent for your drill to stay totally still and not slide, but I've never had any problem just guessing, getting it pretty close, and having it still fit on the key ring. So just get as close as you can. I'm going to fast forward through the rest of the drilling because all that we're doing here is drilling holes straight through every popsicle stick. Next, you'll want to pull out the crystals that you plan on using for your try-on sticks. I'm going to be using the classic or clear sizes SS2 through SS9. You can really use anything you want. You could even put designs on here like butterflies or cherries or whatever you have in mind. But I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through the rest of this because all I'm doing is putting them in a straight line from the smallest to the largest crystals on the table for me to use. Now, depending on the popsicle sticks that you purchased, they might have this matte film over the top that protects them from scratching. So all I'm doing here is removing that film using my Cricut Picker tool from the top layer of the popsicle stick. I am leaving it on the bottom layer. You don't have to, but I prefer to do that just because I'm going to be moving the sticks around and I just want to prevent as much scratching as possible. So I remove it from all the sticks. I'm going to fast forward the rest of that process. The next step is to add all of your crystals onto your popsicle sticks. I like to do this with UV curing resin. I'll explain why a little bit later in the video. To do this, you want to lay all of your popsicle sticks face up under your curing light or on the tray that you'll be putting under your curing light. Make sure that your popsicle sticks have the shiny side facing up because that's what your crystals are going to stick onto. And get them all into a straight line so that your crystals can be as straight and even as possible. Now that you have your crystals ready and your popsicle sticks ready, you can start with your resin. Really, any UV resin is going to work just great. I usually like this Resin Rockers one, but because I ran out of that, I'm going to use a resin that I picked up from Michaels. Just make sure that you read the instructions and cure accordingly. We'll cure this one for 60 seconds. You can totally put the resin directly onto your popsicle sticks. If you mess up, you can just wipe it off. This resin is quite liquidy, and so I prefer to pour it into a plastic cup first and then apply it with a toothpick. The main thing you want to look out for is that you are going from a bigger spot to a smaller spot because your crystals are going from bigger to smaller. I'll fast forward me putting the resin on and then I'll show you what the spots look like once it's all applied. And here's a close up of the spots going from small to big. Your next step is to put the crystals onto your resin spots. The tool that I'm using here is called a pick and stick. You can also use a wax pen or a wax tip pencil, really anything that makes it easy for you to pick up your crystals. It does make it a little bit harder for them to release into the resin, so you can also use tweezers if that's easier or if you don't have a wax tip pen. So let's go ahead and fast forward through putting the crystals onto the resin. Once you have all of your crystals placed onto the tray, you're going to slide it in and put them in their little tanning bed for whatever the recommended time on your UV resin bottle said. So leave them in there and let them cure. Once the timer's up, you should be totally good to take them out, give them a check. 
if they're fully cured, they'll be totally hard. Those crystals are not going anywhere. You can see I'm tapping, I'm scraping them up close. You can tell that these are not going anywhere. Now this step is totally optional. It's just something that I prefer to do, but I'm going to add labels to all of the sticks so that I know exactly what size is on that stick. If you're doing designs, you can also label your designs the same way. All I do is use this brother label printer and print out all of the sizes that I want on those sticks. As you can see here, my label maker doesn't print them to be small enough for that popsicle stick. So I then go through and cut all of my labels to be just a little bit thinner so that they'll fit on each stick. I'll go ahead and fast forward me cutting up the labels and applying them to the popsicle sticks. And just to make sure that my labels stay on super good and that they're as clear as possible, I push out all the extra space and air bubbles with my Cricut scraper tool and just get them as flat as possible. So I mentioned earlier that I was leaving the matte film on the back of the popsicle sticks. That's totally optional. I just prefer to do it so I don't scratch them throughout the process of making these. But if you left it on, you can go ahead and remove it here and you'll be able to see just how crystal clear these popsicle sticks look now. Go ahead and remove the matte backing from all of the rest of your popsicle sticks at this point. If you notice any of these jagged edges around the hole where you drilled, it'll usually come off at this point. It's generally from that matte film being melted or scraped up during the drilling process. So you should normally have just totally smooth holes once you finish this step. At this point, you should be totally ready to put all of your popsicle sticks onto your key ring. I love this key ring because it is spring loaded. And so all you have to do is slide the part with the spring off and you can easily add and remove popsicle sticks. So if you needed to take off some sizes, add some new designs, this makes it really simple. As long as you drilled your holes correctly, your popsicle stick should be able to round the corner perfectly and slide directly onto this key ring. Let's go ahead and slide all of the popsicle sticks onto the key ring now. All right, now that we have all of our popsicle sticks onto the keychain, all that you need to do is add your spring mechanism back on to close it up. This will make it so that none of your popsicle sticks slide on or off somehow and it makes it super easy for your clients to flip right through them. So now that I've shown you how to make these, I want to show you a few things not to do. So these are called swizzle sticks, um, and you can kind of see if you look up close, these get like really scratched up, because these are like, I don't know what they're made of, just some kind of plastic. These are more of a thick acrylic. So not to say that these ones won't get scratched, but they stand the test of time better. The other thing is that on this one, you can't really fit a key ring, um, so the key ring's too thick for it. So we tried to do like a wire, but it just doesn't look as classy as a key ring. Um, and so another thing we tried is a D ring, which is fine, it would work. You're limited on how many you can fit on there. And if they fall down this side, then they'll just like always be like that spread out. Um, and then you have to like pull this thing with pliers. So this is the best thing we've found is the spring-loaded key ring, you can fit more on there and you can easily, like you saw, you can easily add and remove them and it keeps them all together and straight. You could even put like, you know, cherry design, butterfly design, cross design. That's why I like the thicker popsicle sticks better because as you can see, like the SS9 is already filling up a good portion of this popsicle stick. So you wouldn't be able to fit like a butterfly or a cross or like a full-blown design if you did a, a swizzle stick. Another thing I wanted to show you, this one I did with E6000 glue, and then this one I did with the resin that we saw. The pros of doing resin is it cures in, like we saw, 60 seconds. This takes 24 to 48 hours to dry fully. And then I feel like the resin is right in place. Like some of my glue smudged afterwards and while I was applying it, and it's just not as crystal clear. This one is like absolutely crystal clear. So I would definitely go with the resin rather than a long drying glue and there you have it it looks really classy now the good news is that if you don't want to do all of that i will make them for you just go to geminismile.com sign up for a wholesale account and order the tooth gem size guide you can get them with crystals and labels already attached or blank versions to make your own
I hope that this tutorial was helpful and follow along on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook for more tips in the future.